We're speaking with uh, Dick Pound. Uh, let's see. We'll start with some of the credentials. I don't think we've got enough time to do all of the credentials. No offense. Uh, Long-standing member of the International Olympic Committee. First ever chair of the World Anti-Doping Agency. Current chair of the Olympic Broadcast Service. And the reason we wanted to talk to you today is a longtime vocal advocate for clean sport. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join us. Pleasure to be here. Now, I'd like to go back in time a little to start. Before the change in leadership at weightlifting and before the McLaren report was started, what were your thoughts on weightlifting as a sport and its place in the Olympic sphere? Did it have a place? Well, I always thought so. I mean, it's, it's a traditional uh, sport. Uh, it's an exciting sport if you if you watch it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's strategic. It's emotional. It's it's everything. Uh, but it's it's been struggling for a long time with uh, with doping. Now, that struggle has started, as you say, a long time ago, and it has continued um, either below the surface or just above the surface for, I don't know, decades maybe. Um, and has that been kind of your concern with the sport all along was, was, the, was the unfairness that, uh, that doping adds to, to the whole uh, field of play? Uh, that certainly, and, and in the, the context of the Olympic Games, uh, I mean, in, in, in 1988, I actually proposed that uh, because of the, because basically half the positive tests in the Olympic Games were weightlifting, this, this very small sport. And it, it was kind of tainting the Olympic Games. Everyone thought the Olympic Games were, were filled with dopers and uh, instead of mainly the sport. So I said, look, it, it's, it's an exciting traditional sport, but it's in trouble. We should help. Uh, weightlifting solve its problem and, and the best way we could do that would be to take it off the Olympic program for one or two or however many cycles it uh, would have taken to uh, get back uh, on track. Uh, that was probably probably a little too extreme but we did uh, I remember telling the IOC president Sam Ranch at the time I said I'm going to give this interview and I think in about five minutes your phone is going to start to ring and you'll, you'll do what you have to do, but you can say, look, you know, it's clear that you have a problem. Uh, young Pound is a little impetuous perhaps, but I was Young Pound then. Uh, but on the other hand, he's, he's, you know, he's a vice president of the IOC and, you know, it, you've got to help me to help you. And so they, it, it, one of the many changes they did was they, they changed all the weight categories so that all the records, you know, were, were you had to start over again. And they, they introduced a, um, system of fines uh, for uh, national federations that, that had problems and uh, the numbers were not great in terms of the fine. I said you know $50,000 I mean really that's just like an entry fee and he said well if you look at the countries that are involved in uh, this it's pretty hard for Bulgaria or you know name another country to come up with 50,000 US dollars in those days so it, it's a it's a serious uh, disincentive for them to uh, to dope and anyway is so that went underground for a while and then came back up um, and you know it was it's it's pretty blatant and it was pretty clear that weightlifting had no particular interest in solving the problem now, uh it's my opinion and my opinion and you know two dollars gets you on a city transit bus here in winnipeg uh that once once bach uh relatively recently, just a few years back, said, you know what, you guys are provisional. Uh, weightlifting took a step back and actually did take a, a good hard look at their qualifying system and the like. And from a qualifying system standpoint and that, I think they made uh, great progress. Is that, is that safe to say? I, I, they certainly made progress in, 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 in that area, uh, not in their overall governance, not in their overall ethos of, of, of sport, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think you have to give them credit for that, but, but it, it's not, you know, you weren't winning the hearts and minds of anybody in weightlifting. That's fair. Now, since, uh, since now fast forward a little bit, um, I don't want to assume that everybody in Canada, that it's a small enough country that every lawyer named Richard knows every other lawyer named Richard that's involved in sport. Uh, but I'd, I think it's safe to say that you're familiar with uh, Richard McLaren's latest work uh, on weightlifting and his report. 
indeed yes um do you were you surprised by what you saw um no not at all i, I think it's it, what you need is is a, an experienced investigator to get in there and you know find the facts and report on them so that it's not just uh, you know, rumors or, or um, he said, she said uh, kind of stuff. So, I mean, he's a very thorough uh, uh, investigator. He was, we, we worked together on the Russian investigation back in 2015 and 2016. And so, uh, no, I've, I've known him for many years and I think uh, weightlifting did the right thing in, in uh, appointing him. Now, with the revelations that came out in the McLaren report and with new leadership in place at the International Federation, do you see this as, as a clean slate and someplace that they can move forward from? Or do you think that weightlifting is just so far down the road that it needs removal from the Olympic program for a couple of cycles to, to get its house in order? I, I suspect uh, it may come to that. I mean, one, one of the, the hallmarks that was particularly worrying in, in McLaren's uh, report is the complete reluctance of, of people with knowledge to come forward and, and speak with them. And, and um, that was, a, for me, was the worst sign of all. Because if the people that are, that are there and, and, you know, the, the president is gone, but uh, they were all part of that system and they have no uh, apparent willingness to come forward and say, all right, this, yes, this is what was going on. And this is, we agree that we need to do something fairly radical to, to solve this. So I, I don't know uh, whether that, that penny has dropped for the, uh, the the bulk of the people involved in weightlifting. And if it hasn't dropped, then I think they have a, a real problem. And, and it might well come to um, come to suspending them from the program for one, two, three, whatever uh, Olympiads it, it may be. And, and that, of course, they haven't figured out the economic impact of that. Um, and, you know, my, my experience is that international sports federations only feel pain in their wallets, nowhere else. And if, if that Olympic funding dries up, I think it's going to be a, a, a big difficulty for, uh, for weightlifting. Wonderful. I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Uh, thank you for your time and, of course, for your decades of service to sport. Well, thank you. And good luck with your program and, and good luck with the competition. I hope it works. Thank you. Take care. That's it. Easy peasy. Appreciate the okay. help. Thank you. Thanks. Good Take luck. care. Bye.